The water come in, I have no place to stay. All last night, I sat on the levee and moaned. All last night, I sat on the levee and moaned. I know Omri is dead, and I know that for the time being you stepped into his shoes, whoever you are. I am not in the habit of trusting people these days. Trust gets you dead when it's given to the wrong person, and there is a lot of wrong out there. But I am willing to set prejudice aside for a few moments so we can have a little chat, see if we can work together. I'm assuming you scored a few useful things out of that last tower cache. Well, there's more where that came from. As long as nothing happens to me. Understood? Get yourself to the churchyard. I will unlock the gate so you can reach the area. Stay out in the open. If I am satisfied you are alone, you will see me. here before. Cheers. Don't get used to meeting like this. It's a rarity. I'm not fond of the face-to-face -face either. Too much work. All right, then we're on the same page. I'll get to the point. Why are you helping me? Henri trusted you, so that's good enough for me. Were you two friends? I guess you could say we were new friends, sure. I saved his ass from a slew of walkers in the bayou, and I liked talking to the guy. He had a way about him. He sure did. My daughter was fond of him. Loved the way he could spin a tail. Well, may he rest in peace. You got some curmudgeonly shoes to fill. 
I'll point you to tower caches with useful supplies, and you get me the intel they contain. Sound like a deal? Okay. okay. Maybe. But I have a question first. The tower seems to be after you and your daughter hardcore. What's that all about? You spotted those posters, huh? You wanna go there? All right, I'll give you the basics. I used to be with the tower. Now I'm not. We don't see eye to eye. I'm in the right, they are in the wrong. That's all I got for you now. Yeah, I'm on board. Good. Glad that's settled. Take this drawing. There's some intel at the location in the drawing. When you have it, leave it for me at the usual spot. Schlesinger and Ingelheimer. What's with the drawing? My daughter Ambra has a gifted eye and a gifted hand. It's her way of staying sane. She's watching right now. Probably documenting this exact moment. Or maybe she's just sketching a dead cat. I never know. Okay. going in here. It's dark.
go up here. Twinkie. Ugh. Great. where the pump would go.
on daytime. That was probably dumb.
lower the weapon. Right now! This is our turf. Leave. I am not a born leader, but by the time I was 13 years old, I had seen it all. Hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, starvation, disease. Haiti never seemed to catch a break. So when the dead started to rise and panic over to my I had to rise. My neighbors were scared, but they were also resilient. All they needed was a voice to rally around. And in a moment of pure passion, a moment charged with a desperate drive to make certain we all survived, I took the lead, and they listened. But those first few days were pure chaos. So much loss, and yet we were able to gain a foothold in the Ninth Ward. We put our collective minds to work set up a scavenge system that was both safe and fruitful. Word started getting out. If you wanted to survive, go find Mama and her people. But soon, our community had outgrown the capacity of our perimeter. A decision had to be made. Start turning others away, or venture forth and establish a new home that could support every lost soul who found their way to our doorstep. I think you can guess what decision I made. The tower will always stand. Mama. All right. Can't get there. <sighs> Shit. already.
bite me. Anthony, how could he be so dense? Ah, he should have known better. You got nerve rolling in here uninvited. Don't mean to intrude. We don't need strays poking around right now. We have enough problems to deal with. Maybe I'm the solution. You know what? Yeah, you might prove useful. My brother is in some deep shit. Pack of reclaimed scum snatched him. Anthony's a good kid. Bit dim, but he doesn't deserve whatever those freaks have in store. We can't get anywhere near where they're holed up. Light blue house across the way. They'll gut him immediately if they see us coming. But you? They don't know you. You'll be able to stroll right in. After that, whatever you need to do, that's your business. Personally, I'd put a few bullets through their skulls. Let the dirt reclaim them. I don't have time. Taking a quick break. Ah.
precisely then when the nightmare's claws are digging into the thin flesh of our fading hope that we must defy the nightmare and live truly live and make no mistake mere survival is not living scrounging for crumbs like a timid field mouse begging some simpleton who bumbled her way into the role of heartless dictator for guidance not me. I choose to embrace everything that makes me human. I choose to carve my own way through this new world. I am not a lowly animal. I should not be acting like one. Humor me for a moment while I recount an old biology. Many of you listening will no doubt recall the campfire tale of Charlie Boy. He met his end at the hands of the Sukiyong the Bogachia Swamp. But a lesser known Charlie Boy tale is what I will regale you with now. As a youth, Charlie Boy was not one to achieve <sighs> dreams. In fact, you could say the young lad was a bit of a miscreant. Thieving, vandalizing, <coughs> terrorizing. Mischief was in his blood. And mischief is what made the man. On a sweltering <coughs> summer's eve, one of those Nola nights when the air was so thick and hot a dragonfly could barely get airborne. Charlie Boy set out from his home in the 17th Ward and skulked on over to the Garden District with revenge thumping in his chest. His family had been wronged by some rich folk landlord types who were scheming to get Charlie Boy and his family evicted for no good reason at all. Now, Charlie Boy knew there wasn't much he could do being just a 12-year-old beanpole, but he was not about to sit idly by and let old money greed ruin his family without landing a counterpunch. So out of chicken wire, Charlie Boy molded a huge head and put an old Pulcinella mask on it, the nose stretching down to the chin. <coughs> he painted the whole thing black as night. With the head on his shoulders, Charlie Boy stood a gangly seven feet tall. A messenger from the underworld. When he found the mansion of his oppressors, midnight about to strike, he slipped over the backyard wall and scanned the opulent home for a bedroom window to tap upon and give the sleeper inside the fright of their life. Make them think death itself had come. Hmm.